All right, so AMD just threw a bunch of product names, numbers, and everything else at us. I wanted to sit down here straight hot off the press and discuss everything about AMD's 2025 laptop CPU lineup, because this, this is interesting. This is one area that AMD could absolutely dominate in this year. Anyways, to kick things off, I actually wanted to talk about what has gotten me the most excited about AMD's upcoming 2025 lineup. And that isn't some high-end CPU. No, no, this is all about translating Zen 5 into more affordable, more accessible processors. I mean, the current Ryzen AI 9 series offers amazing performance in real-world scenarios and gaming while being backstopped by pretty good battery life versus Intel's Lunar Lake. Unfortunately though, laptops with it are still pretty expensive and AMD absolutely needed something with their current architecture to compete against the 200V series, but below the $1,000 mark. Well, the Ryzen AI 7 350 and AI5 340 look like the perfect CPUs to take AMD laptops to less expensive price points without having to use older architectures like they've done in the past. Other than that, both get a combination of Zen 5 and Zen 5C cores, along with pretty heavily cut down RDNA 3.5 integrated graphics compared to the Ryzen AI9 series. Still, you also get more processing threads than any of the Lunar Lake CPUs, and that should help with light creator workloads, which is also why AMD chose heavily multi-threaded apps to showcase their claimed performance here. But this comparison is also pretty interesting since the 350 seems to be targeting Qualcomm's X1P42, a chip that's typically found in $700 to $800 laptops, rather than the X1P64. If anything, that makes me, I guess, hopeful the Ryzen AI 7 and 5 series chips will also reach that price, at least in a perfect world. And speaking of a perfect world, look, we all know that in that perfect world, AMD's entire top to bottom laptop lineup would be made of Zen 5 architecture chips. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen. So we get into a situation where we got some rebrands here. In this case, what AMD is doing is basically taking the Ryzen 8000 HS and U series and rebranding them as the Ryzen 200 series. Now we also have to remember that that 8000 series was in itself a rebrand with a slightly revised NPU of the Ryzen 7000 series. And honestly, with this Ryzen 200 series, this combination of Zen 4 and RDNA 3 has more lives than disco. And honestly, this is just another attempt to repackage CPUs from two years ago and sell them to people who might not know any better. I mean, at the very least, AMD could have thrown us a bone here and given us a few frequency bumps for the CPU core and the GPUs, but nope, these are essentially a clone of the 7000 and 8000 HS series. And look, other than that one point of frustration, I don't really have much criticism about AMD's 2025 lineup. I, I mean, it's pretty straightforward here other than a bunch of, I guess, alphabet soup when it comes to their naming conventions. But one of their huge advantages in 2025, at least this is the way I feel, will be in the gaming laptop space because they are translating Zen 5 directly into a bunch of high-end gaming laptop CPUs. Now those processors are gonna go head to head against Intel's Arrow Lake in gaming laptops. And if the desktop space is anything to go by, well, Intel really doesn't stand a chance when you compare Zen 5 to Arrow Lake. And one of the biggest surprises, for me at least, is that AMD has decided to roll out 3D vCache into their flagship CPU straight from the jump, instead of waiting a few months like they did with the Ryzen 7945HX3D. And this, this goes right towards Intel's jugular when it comes to gaming laptops. Regardless of how late that processor rolled out and the fact it was only in a single laptop, the ROG SCAR 17X3D, it was almost unbelievably fast. And now its successor is supposed to be even faster and should be more widely available. But there is one little issue here. If our conversations with laptop manufacturers prove to be true, this thing will also be hideously expensive. And yet, I guess that's to be expected since the Ryzen 9 9955HX 3D, my God, what a, what a mouthful. It, it sits at the pinnacle of AMD's fire range lineup, which also consists of the 9955HX and 9850HX. And if you remember on the desktop side, the Zen 5 processors typically got their frequencies cut back a little bit versus their Zen 4 predecessors. But that doesn't really happen here. Instead, the X3D gets a nice overall bump upwards 
and the others stay pretty flat while maintaining the same configurable TDP range as a previous generation. Overall though, I gotta say, I'm a bit disappointed that AMD isn't launching any Ryzen 7 or 5 models into the gaming laptop market, at least not yet. And I'm also so bummed that the 3D V cache is reserved for their highest end processor, because in a perfect world again, we'd have a laptop equivalent of the 8 core 16 thread 9800X3D, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen at all. Things could change though, since what we're hearing is that fire range based laptops will only start rolling out into stores sometime in May with broader availability towards September. But when they do, they'll be exclusively paired with the NVIDIA RTX 5000 series discrete cards since AMD has absolutely positively no plans to compete in the high-end laptop GPU market anytime soon. But at least the Ryzen HX series is relatively straightforward, even though its naming convention looks like a bunch of jumbled up letters and numbers. But I can't say the same thing about what AMD is about to do in the gaming handheld side. And while this isn't something we usually cover, there's no avoiding the fact that it seems like every single company is trying to suddenly launch these Windows-based gaming handhelds. Personally, I really don't see what the draw of these things is, since Windows is an absolutely terribly bloated platform for this market. But hopefully, with SteamOS opening itself up to third-party devices, we should maybe see a shift towards that. But anyway, Anyways, because of this popularity and to feed into this market, AMD is rolling out the Ryzen Z2 series, a lineup that might look new, but it actually isn't. This is a virtual mishmash of new, sort of new, and some rebranding just sprinkled in. So let's go through this from top to bottom. The Ryzen Z2 Go uses the almost four year old Zen 3 Plus architecture alongside RDNA 2 graphics to create an entry level, very budget focused, four core, eight thread handheld chip. Basically, it feels like AMD took a Ryzen 3 7335U and slapped a huge 12CU 680M graphics core onto it. Meanwhile, the Ryzen Z2 is actually just a rebranded Z1 Extreme, and that makes the Z2 Extreme the only completely new processor here. It gets the same eight core, 16 thread layout as the previous Z1 Extreme, though in this case, with a mix of Zen and Zen 5 C cores. It also runs at lower frequencies, but remember, this chip is all about maximizing gaming potential. And due to that, it gets a huge step upwards with RDNA 3.5 and four more graphics CUs. But like I said, before, I'm really not entirely convinced of the whole Windows gaming handheld market. But if you guys want us to start covering these devices, that's exactly what we're going to do. Just let us know in the comments down below. Yay or nay to those things. But anyways, the last thing I wanted to cover is a super interesting development by AMD. And that is that ultimate APU that I hinted at at the very beginning of the video called Strix Halo. Now, this is really targeted, according to AMD at least, towards creators and AI workloads. But it also has massive ramifications for the gaming market too. And this is what AMD calls the Ryzen AI Max and Ryzen AI Max Plus series. Basically what they've done is combined a processor with up to 16 cores and 32 threads onto the same die with an absolutely massive integrated GPU that has 40 RDNA 3.5 graphics cores in the highest end part. I mean, it's meant to sit at the very pinnacle of AMD's AI focused laptop lineup above the Ryzen AI 9 series. Now, if we do a little bit of back of napkin math based on what we know about RDNA 3.5 and AMD's current AI 9 series processors, which have a maximum of 16 GPU units, this layout could conceivably offer RTX 4070 laptop GPU performance levels, or possibly even better if the AI Max is given enough power. And that's exactly what AMD's setting it up to do. While the Ryzen AI 9 series CPUs top out at 54 watts, this design is meant to scale from 45 watts all the way up to 120 watts. Meanwhile, the core layouts get a comparatively huge amount of cache that's identical to the Ryzen gaming CPUs and way, way above what's offered on any other Ryzen AI chip. Also, they have the ability to run with up to 128 gigabytes of memory across a massive 256 bit wide bus. But like I hinted at before, with a focus on memory, it feels like the vast majority of these processors will make their way into mobile workstations and even compact AI machines, at least initially. There is one exception though, and that's the refreshed ROG Flow Z13. We'll actually be doing a little bit of a deeper dive into Strix Halo and the Flow Z13 in a dedicated video a little bit 
bit later this week since we got some hands-on time with both a few weeks ago. So stay tuned for that one. And that pretty much wraps things up. And I've got to say, AMD has a huge opportunity in 2025. At least on paper, they have what looks like an ultra strong product lineup from the very top to the very bottom. Intel, on the other hand, it looks like after a very, very challenging 2024, the first half of this year at least is still going to be a little bit of an issue for them because they are relying on Arrow Lake and some of their older architectures to carry them through until whatever they have coming later this year. So as long as AMD can hold things together, they can actually make a huge impact in the laptop market. I mean, think about it. The Ryzen AI 9, 7, and 5 will line up super well against Lunar Lake. Meanwhile, the new HX series should be able to manhandle Arrow Lake and gaming laptops, especially with that new X3D chip. And at this point, at least, Intel has absolutely no answer to the Z2 series or Strix Halo. So yes, AMD has the possibility to absolutely dominate the laptop market this year and potentially into the future. But there's there's just this one little voice inside of my head that is always talking about AMD and the one area that they have had problems in the laptop market. And that's just supplying their chips into devices. What they need is to follow up these amazing technical potentials here with actual devices on sale that have their chips. And they need to do that soon. If they're able to do that, this is going to be one heck of a year for every area in the laptop market. And I'm excited to see how things shake out. And I hope you are too. So anyways, I'm Mike with Harvard Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this overview of everything that's coming from AMD. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.